So the process of extracting the original message signal from the DSBSC wave is known as detection or demodulation or DSBSC. The following demodulators or detectors are used for demodulating DSBSC wave. So we have three uh, different types of detectors. First type is the coherent detection or the synchronous detection. And the second method is Costas receiver. Third method is the squaring loop. Okay, so we'll see one by one. Again, using a product modulator here. So the uh, DSBSC wave is uh, given as input to the product modulator. And uh, the carrier signal here, we are going to uh, generate again locally using a local oscillator. So you, uh, in the transmitter side, we have already used a carrier signal and a message signal for generating the DSBSC waveform. So again, here we are generating one more carrier signal uh, with a phase of phi. Okay, so it is VC dash cos 2 pi FCT plus phi. So this is fed as input to the product modulator whose output is V of T. So this is fed as input to the low pass filter. So this is for uh, just filtering the high frequency uh, components. And finally, demodulated output is obtained as V naught of T. So this process message signal can be extracted from DSBSC wave by multiplying with the local carrier. So locally, uh, local uh, oscillator signal is exactly coherent. So in terms of frequency and phase. So here, so we have mentioned the phase angle here. The locally generated carrier signal should match the frequency and phase of the input waveform. That is the carrier signal which is which we are using at the transmitter side, and this carrier signal which is locally generated should be matching in terms of frequency and phase. So resulting signal is then passed through a low pass filter. Output of this filter is is the desired message signal. So finally, the demodulated output will be the original message signal. So let us see the analysis. So local oscill uh, oscillator signal is given as VC dash cos 2 pi FCT plus phi. So let us take it as first equation. So phi is the phase difference between the local oscillator signal and the carrier signal. So let us determine what will be phi. Based on this phi, we will determine what will be the output of the DSBSC modulator. So the DSBSC wave is given as S of t. So we, we know already what is S of t, which is VC cos 2 pi FCT M of t. So this is the combination of carrier signal and the message signal. That is the product of the carrier signal and the message signal. So this is our DSBSC input signal. Let us take it as the third equation. Now, the output of the product modulator will be the product of the input S of t. So this is S of t is the DSBSC input. And uh, this is the locally generated carrier signal, VC dash cos 2 pi FCT plus phi. So we are going to again take the product of these two, first and the third equations. So th this is our second equation. Let us take it as a second equation, which is the output of the product modulator. So we are going to substitute three in equation two. Three and one, we are going to substitute here. So it is VC into VC dash cos 2 pi FCT cos 2 pi FCT plus phi into M of t. So this is cos A cos B. So expand this one. So it becomes cos A plus B plus cos A minus B. If you expand. So this is fed as input to the low pass filter. So low pass filter is going to filter the high frequency term. So we will uh, finally we will have the second term that is VC VC dash cos phi into M of t. So this in the above equation second term is the scaled version of the message signal. So this finally we are going to extract this message signal and it can be extracted by passing through a low pass filter. So now our output of the low pass filter will be only the second term. So this is the low frequency term. So this is taken as sixth equation after passing through a low pass filter. Okay. Now, so the output of the this particular coherent detection, it depends on this phi, that is the phase angle of this uh, output okay so if, what about cos phi when phi is 0 and phi is 90 degree so this this output will be maximum when phi will be 0 so this will be maximum when cos phi will be 1 or phi is 0 and when phi is 90 degrees so this total term will be 0 the output will be 0 so the maximum and the minimum outputs can be achieved when you vary this phase angle Phi. The amplitude of the demodulated signal is maximum when phi is zero. That's why the local oscillator signal and the carrier signal should be in phase. So when phi is zero, that is, th there is no phase difference between the carrier signal that is from the transmitter end and the locally generated carrier at the receiver end. There should not be any phase difference between the two carrier waveforms. Then we will get the maximum output at the 
detector that is the original message signal will be properly received when there is no phase difference between the transmitter and the receiver so there should not be any phase difference between these two signals so amplitude of the demodulated signal is minimum when the phase angle is plus or minus 5 by 2 so ideally it is zero so there is a zero demodulated signal occurs when phi will be plus or minus 90 degrees so this effect we call it as quadrature null effect so this occurs in the uh, coherent detection or synchronous detection 